Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Rayhan, and now you're listening to Code of Gas. It's time to take for peace. All right. Hello everyone, welcome back. So today we're having another special guest from Serbia. His name is Slobodan. So maybe uh, Slobodan, you can introduce about yourself first. What's your name? Where are you from? Sure. First, thank you for inviting me for your podcast. It's a pleasure. I mean, I, I know you're just starting, but uh, I think that you have great passion. And luckily, this is going to be something very successful. You just need to stick with it. The, the beginnings are the hardest one. So like you said, my name is Slobodan and um, I'm from Serbia. Uh, I have uh, multiple years of experience. I'm a senior front-end developer. And actually, I started working as a freelancer at, at my early stages of my career. And uh, after that, slowly progressed into getting a job and projects in some of the biggest companies. And mostly, like in most uh, part of my career, I work as a remote developer, especially because I'm from a small city where there isn't any significant companies, uh, IT companies. So my only choice was if I don't want to leave my home city, the choice was to work remotely or just relocate. But the living here is, uh, I don't know, I like, I know, I mean, I live here since since I was born and I know everybody here and um, the nature is beautiful and uh, it's stressless. It doesn't, it's not too crowded. And also whatever I want, I can get in like 15, 20 minutes. It's not, it's not boring. It's not like a village, but I think the balance of the environment and the people is perfect at least for my taste and for family because i'm a father father now so yeah uh yeah i think that's generally about it i mean uh, in, in regards to technologies and my career i do work mostly in the front end i have some back end uh, development but mainly in personal projects but in regards to work and as a as a paid professional i work as a front end developer yeah all right, that's so interesting. So cool. So, uh, how are you doing actually? I'm doing good. Uh, if okay. you if you think about the the situation in Corona and yeah. all of that, the yeah, situation is pretty stable. At least people are not paying too much attention. Not sure what what is the situation over there. Yeah, it's it's kind of better right now. You know, like there's vaccinated people get vaccinated. And then people like still stay at home, but yeah, like keeping their protocol. So, uh, what's keeping you busy this day? I, I, I mean, I know you, you're making YouTube, you run YouTube and then like you, you, you made course like, yeah. So, uh, mainly, I mean, yes, like you said, uh, I have a YouTube channel. I started a channel this year. I don't see it as uh, very successful yet, but the thing is that I'm not trying to win like the audience right away. The thing is I'm trying to create something, like you said, the complete course. Uh, the first technology that I'm started is Angular. So I'm trying to create something which someone who wants to learn the Angular will come and have something to reference to from beginning to the end. And the way I'm creating these tutorials, because there are plenty of like thousands and thousands of tutorials on YouTube, I'm trying to present it in a little bit different way, in my way. So someone likes my approach, maybe different from how somebody else is doing. So we are offering variety of tutorials on YouTube. And uh, the time when I expect to get some impact on YouTube is when I finally complete the course and have a complete solution for somebody who is looking towards to get into industry. And after that, I'm looking forward to get into some more uh, popular choices like react for example or our view even yeah and apart from that i mean that takes um, some amount of my free time because i'm doing that in my free time it's not not something that i'm getting anything back i'm just trying to get back to the community you know to share my knowledge that's the whole the purpose to give back mm -hmm. but apart from that i work full-time at multi-login this company from estonia and mm -hmm. it basically it's a startup so i I'm working there as a front-end developer and we are build, building basically a desktop application for multiple platforms. And it's very interesting, really. 
And apart from that as well, I'm also very active on LinkedIn where uh, there I have some decent audience, I, I may say. Uh, at the moment, I have around 18K uh, connections and followers. And uh, yes, uh, also it takes a lot of my free time as well to create content because I'm trying to share uh, my knowledge as much as I can and to create uh, different code snippets, different tips in regards to how to get a job, how to get a remote job, and how to prepare yourself for interviews as well because I have changed quite quite some companies in my career. So uh, all these things take a, quite a big chunk of my time, you know. And yeah, I'm trying to balance everything out. Yeah. But it's really good, man. I mean, people can like do work and do their hobbies, like like making content like yourself. But you really, really did a great job, I guess. Like that, I'm seeing yeah. everything. Yeah. But uh, actually, I I already yeah. But I know it's in the first time. Maybe it's hard, right? Yeah, it's it's hard, especially because uh, like your, my main job takes me eight hours a day, every single day. So in order to create something, to to see what actually people are looking for, and for the ideas, it's not that hard because people usually come with uh, come to me with a lot of questions already now. So I get the ideas on a daily basis, and I just choose what people are asking the most. So they uh, actually people are giving me the ideas what I should you know what should I create and what should I talk about on LinkedIn or on YouTube, but the thing is that you need to to wake up earlier before your job to create something and then to deliver that and also I receive a ton of messages and comments on on the posts so it takes time I usually do that in the evening to answer some of these questions not not some but I try to answer all of them but sometimes you cannot for example. A uh, couple of weeks ago, I I had a post which got almost like a viral. I don't know what's the terminology for viral, but it got more than uh, more than a million views, and twenty thousand likes, and you know, who knows how many comments. So it was really hard to go and answer for everyone on that post. But like I said, it takes a lot of time. The only thing which keeps you into that is if you if you have if you share the passion towards the technologies, then you can do all of that without checking at clock how much how many time you spent on a particular post or whatnot if you love it it's not going to be job or additional work it's just something that you enjoy yeah yeah actually i agree with you but and then in the end the impact of your your act is really uh, useful for others people yeah it is i mean one of the first um when i started actually doing that the idea was how can I stay up to date? Because the last year I was looking for a job and I I was out of the like uh, checking for the, the latest thing in front end. And I was out for like a couple of months. And I when I was got back to to review the, the blogs and to review the new uh, official documentation of libraries. And I saw that there are quite some new things because if you're not paying attention for a couple of months or let's say a year, there's so many things to to catch up with if you want to be competitive into industry so i asked myself how can i be always in sync what is new is what is the latest and what one of my ideas was hey let's try to share that with others and right now i'm always in a search of the latest things what's released what's going to be released what's the best way of solve some things and that led me to the point to create content to to revisit some some of the things that i actually know already and to always be up to date with the latest technologies and especially in the IT industry, you can see that everything is changing so fast that you need to be up to date and always to remind yourself and to learn something new and not, you know, don't be passive. If you want to be, like I said, competitive, if you don't want to be, if you're satisfied with your job and you're just here to get the paycheck, you don't have to check all of those things. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly. So uh, maybe before we start to our topic about front end, uh, I want to say first, really thank you so much for for your time. I mean, I'm really appreciate your sparing your time for this podcast. So actually, I already subscribed your YouTube. Then thank you. <laughs> And 
I see there's a lot of great contents. I really like it, especially about the anglers that you be, you been doing on your YouTube. So you mentioned the angler and view react. Maybe people out there didn't know or maybe haven't known what exactly that tool but for. I mean, like what is front end and what what they would what they do for the front end. Yeah. I mean, generally how I look at the front end, because previously uh, I had some, like I said, back end experience, but uh, the front end is what you actually see when you come to a website. So all these buttons, all these slideshows, images, the text, everything has been built on front end. So that's like a face of a human, you know, and that's basically front end of the application. That's the front end of the web application, websites, whatever you work in a software, that's charge of front-end developer. And uh, the main language of the web development is JavaScript, not just the, the web development. Now we, we have seen that JavaScript has been, you know, changing into different platforms. And it's it's really yes. uh, one of the pop, if not the most popular language at the moment. So we have the different libraries and the tools in order to help us to build these applications much faster. And it has so many popular libraries in the frameworks nowadays, and you can see them popping up every single year. And uh, nice. yeah, Angular is uh, the most, in my in my opinion, the most complete uh, framework, which is a uh, which is it's opinionated framework, and it has all the things that you need in order to to finish application from start to finish. It has it's huge, and it takes a lot of time to to be learned. But once you learn the way how to think inside of the Angular and the patterns that they are trying to enforce, you see that it's all that you need. On the other hand, you have uh, React, which is small, lightweight. It's a library. It helps you also to build single page applications and to separate your application into smaller, maintainable uh, pieces of the application. Uh, it's easier to learn. It's much faster and it's developed by Facebook. So it has been proven that it works on large websites as well and large applications. So we have different set of the, these frameworks and libraries across the front-end world and um, I'm just trying to cover and uh, you know the things which I'm using the most and which I love the most so I guess it depends on the passion what people sometimes it's, it's just a preference because all, a majority of these uh, technologies are have been proven that they work on both small and big uh, applications so it's uh, in most cases a preference of a user of a team of a company it depends and at my current company I'm working with Angular and it was one of their decisions, and I really enjoy working with Angular. Yeah. Yes, that's really true. I mean, I'm represent as a front end dev too. I really, in the first time, that learning the Angular, and then uh, in the first time, maybe the learning curve, the Angular is really like, you know, we ha we need to learn about the TypeScript first, but actually. Uh, if you really like everyday use it, I mean, you you can you can you can get used to it, the TypeScript, but, but because it's the same like the JavaScript. Yeah, it's like an extension basically to JavaScript. But what do you enjoy most? What is for you? I mean, what what framework or library do you enjoy the most? Personally? So right now I'm. Because in my at the company we're using React, so I'm moving to React. But when I try all of them, like the most popular, like Angular, React, and Vue, I guess the Vue is like you know more lightweight, I guess and really yeah. Yeah. easy it's like it's kinda, in, yeah. yeah yeah it's like i see it as like something in between the react and angular. yes yeah. too strongly agree so basically the front end is more the ui of the like in the apps or the web right exactly and the web apps because Oftentimes, when people actually who are not in tech industry, they you know, they ask me, "Do you build websites?" Uh, 
And website is something different and web app is something different. Because uh, oftentimes you can see a website like uh, you maybe have a business and you want to showcase your portfolio, what you're building to introduce yourself, you know, to show your picture, your description, what your company does. does. But web application is basically the same the thing as when you have a desktop application. The only difference is it's not installed on your system. It's installed on the server. And you can access the entry point is the URL of the browser. That's the main difference. But you're basically building an application inside of the web browser. And people do confuse that because oftentimes at the beginning, people do call me as a web designer because usually web designers build a websites. And I have started as a web, desi web designer, somebody who was building websites until I learned JavaScript and started learning more mm -hmm. about the frameworks. And uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can really agree about your you know, talk. And then uh, maybe people didn't know the difference with it, like the front end developer and the front end engineer. I mean, what's exactly the differences, both of them? Yes. So there's difference mainly in the experience and what is he in charge for. Developers are usually somebody who writes the code, you know, and uh, just writes the code, uh, works more in the, in the code base. And the engineers are somebody who usually engineers the system and looks for the architecture of your uh, application. So generally, engineers are somebody who are more advanced and are looking for more for a bigger picture than just coding, creating this button, how, how it works, and how, you know, what is the UI interface of the application. Yes, that's exactly true. So, uh, you know, I, I saw you working as a software engineer before like, uh, you playing with front end. Is that true? Yes. Yes. So how, how's your story to become a front end? I mean, yeah. from the so, software engineer? Yeah. So for me, I first uh, initially when I was starting with my, I mean, it wasn't a career at the moment because I have a background which is totally different from IT technology, but I was mm -hmm. I always wanted to to transition because I always uh, love technologies and a whole idea for me, like code something inside of the notepad and you create a program that was always exciting for me. So first I started with technologies like PHP and C Sharp, and um, I just didn't like the idea of the backend and, and all of that. Uh, I, I had some projects, like I worked for a couple of years, actually, and most of the projects were just personal projects, but it got me involved into signing into college, into IT and get is the, uh, getting this as my profession, not just a hobby, which it was at the beginning. And on college, I actually had the JavaScript and um, building websites. I had this class and there's where I got in, in love with the front end. And for me, it was something easy to develop, especially, you know, with the old front end when we when, where we only had like HTML, CSS, jQuery, and that's it. We didn't have we didn't have all of these frameworks, and it wasn't so so complex. So for me, it was really easy to comprehend and understand. And mm -hmm. slowly over time, I progressed over. And you you need to start looking at the bigger picture how how it's correlated with with the whole software system and how you start with a product in the first place, how you you know, inter interact with the designers and the backend developers and how it's create a system in order to, to create one product. And that's how you progress basically from somebody who is just on front end to know how to optimize the system, how when it starts growing. And because in the beginning, in most cases, at least for me, I work on small projects, like one month project or a couple of weeks project. But once you start working on the big projects where it needs to scale, then you need to start thinking about the architecture of the application and how to engineer it in order to, to be super optimized and not broken when it starts really growing. Because oftentimes people just start with the, with the applications and they don't expect it to grow. But oftentimes it, it, it ends up being like 10 times that what's, what was initially planned for. Yes, it, it's true. Exactly. And yeah. I saw you, your profile. I mean, you were working at Microsoft. Yes. 
Uh, yes, actually, I was never a full-time employee at Microsoft. I mean, for me, it was always challenging. I think that for everyone who are yeah. just starting as a software developer, everyone wants to work for Microsoft or Google, for Apple, all these big fan companies, how they call it. But the thing is that actually I live in Serbia and we don't have uh, a lot of these companies. But actually, I took uh, the advantage of the coronavirus and the majority of these companies actually went uh, remote. So yeah. by the time when Microsoft went remote, I applied for them. And actually, I didn't get full time position, but I get a project as a remote developer, as a, a vendor, how, how they call it. So I was working on the internal project. And actually, I was working here from Serbia. And uh, when my contract ended up, like I was working there for around six months, I started working for my current company. But it was a great experience. I had the opportunity to work for people who are full-time employees. Actually, I worked for a team which was in Redmond, Washington. And some of the people who were working there actually started as a vendors and they actually transitioned to full-time employees. But for me, it was never, never like the desire to do that. I actually had offers from some of the other companies now. Actually, the other day I had a company from offer from the Amazon to do an interview for uh, for office in the Seattle. But that's not my intention to do. I just, like I said on the beginning, I like where I am and uh, I like working remotely because it gives yes. me a lot of time to do other things in life. Yes, exactly. Now, I mean, these days the office like offer the working from home, I guess. Yeah, the offer was actually to relocate to, to the United <laughs> States. So, yeah, that's that's not an option. But uh, anyways, I mean, I have a really, really good job. Uh, actually, I'm working from the office, but my office is like a minute from my home. So, but at this job, I have everything which I need. To I have the freedom. I have great culture of the company. And also, at the same time, it's great compensation, which is really important. And uh, I, have, I have that freedom to to not commute every single day for half an hour or two hours, whoever, you know, whatever it is in your case, but to spend that free time in order to create some content, to share with the community, to interact with people. And that's, that's something that I get from remote working. Yes, exactly. But actually it's really great, man. I mean, like Microsoft, it's really good. Yeah, it is. So, and, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, do, do you have those aspirations as well, or? Yeah, I think I want to go to, to I mean, like work at the big, big company. But, you know, I, I'm kind of like not ready for that. Yeah, I mean, you're not ready probably because you don't want that desperately to work there because they have a roadmap every single big company if you yes. go to microsoft they want you to succeed they want people and they are not hiding what they are asking on interviews and how to prepare for an interview if you go to their career site they have actually roadmapped what books you need to learn and to read in order to pass their interview and that they're actually showing you what what are examples of the questions for their interviews they want people to succeed because they need more developers not just microsoft all the companies they are fighting for engineers and it's just the thing that people don't want that much because you need to spend months and months learning the data structures and algorithms in order to pass these interviews and it's all about that nothing else Exactly, because uh, you know, like the pressure when work when work there. I mean, like gonna be like really big, right? Yes. Speaking of learning, people out there, uh, listener out there, haven't know about a front end. How do how do we learn about front end? I mean, I mean, what exactly the first thing that we need to prepare? Maybe you need, you have like suggest or something advice. Yes. So, I mean, I always suggest people to what, what has been the case for myself, because it showed me the easy way to get into front end. Oftentimes I see people jump on things too fast, not just front end, but generally in all technologies, because they know what is required in order to be a senior front end developer. For me, 
it was I first learned the HTML and CSS in jQuery. So I wanted first to build only static websites. And I mean, you can build obviously the dynamic websites in jQuery as well, but I just started with the easy projects because at the time it was just my, uh, my side thing. It wasn't my profession. So I was doing these projects, as I, as I said, I was starting as a freelancer and I was doing projects like PSD, Photoshop to HTML. So the only thing which you need there is HTML, CSS in jQuery. And what I was doing this for months and what it gave me, it gave me good understanding how to handle CSS, how to build that UI, you know, and eventually I started getting better projects. So I started learning more JavaScript, not, J not jQuery, which is a library, just just like a shorthand of JavaScript. So I would suggest to learn first JavaScript and all the fundamentals of JavaScript really well before jumping into anything. And I made that mistake myself as well because I, I jumped to a library before because it's easier to work with some libraries. But the thing is that you don't understand the key concepts yeah. and you cannot, yeah, you cannot use it fully and understand it. That's the, but that's the problem with that. And after learning these basic things, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, then you understand what is the problem and what the library or framework is solving. Then I would suggest to learn, learn probably the best thing right now to learn is React because React is much easier to learn. It's much smaller and the chances of getting job are much higher. There's mm -hmm. so many projects and also not to mention React Native, which is a platform for mobile applications. If you learn React Native, there's, there, there is no chance that you're not going to get a job because there is so much, yes. so huge demand for React Native. Yes, it's really high demand. High in demand, totally. Because it, it covers the both flat platforms, iOS and Android. You just build the one code base and you have the application for two platforms. That's insane. And apart from that, I would highly suggest that people learn how to test their applications. So at least learn how to do unit testings for your web application. And I think that that's a last piece that sure. you need to learn in order to close the, the loop and to know the full cycle of development. Be, without that, you cannot call yourself a full developer at least. And at the end, after you learn all of these things, you need to learn a little bit more about the design patterns and how to structure and organize your applications in order to scale, to be optimized and to be fast and how to use the cache and all of these things. But that comes with uh, with years of experience and when you see what what works in project and what not yeah i hope that i answered your your question <laughs> i strongly agree with you i mean basically we need to learn from the fundamentals like the html javascript and the css if yes. you really want to jump to front end career yes and then same, same like you. I mean, I learned from my mistake that I jumped into the frameworks first, like the library first, <laughs> not fundamental. So what was your first? Uh, mine is Angular. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> A big one. <laughs> yes. So basically, uh, I, I did learn the jQuery first, but you know, like not really advanced, going advanced the jQuery, but so I'm like, like jumping to Angular, then it's really overkill, but you know, like it's really hard in the first time, but you, if you learn hard, it's pay off. Exactly. Yeah. It pays off double. Yeah. So, uh, what's your, the most favorite, like, you know, library or something? that maybe you can recommend to other people? Well, it all depends on what actually do you need. There's a plenty of libraries, especially like, um, I mean, nowadays there's a library for whatever you want to do. For example, one of the libraries that you definitely need to learn uh, very well in order to work with the uh, web applications is RxJS, for example. It's really complex yes. and it, it involves around the reactive programming. So it's hard to, to learn, but you don't have to know everything because it's so huge. You just need to learn like 10 main methods inside of this library in order to truly, you know, have the benefits out of it. But in these frameworks like uh, Angular and, uh, and libraries like React, it's really important to know reactive programming. And it's really hard to, because nowadays everything is so, so complex and handling multiple requests, uh, you know, and all of these things in complex applications, it's really hard be, 
without the help of these kind of libraries. Yeah. Yes. And also, I guess mm -hmm. we didn't mention when we when we were saying about CSS. the CSS, we, we, yes. we didn't mention the preprocessors. And in most cases right now, they are in every project and they help, help you with organizing your uh, your folders, your structure of your themes, and they give you some additional functionalities. So, but they are not that hard to learn actually, but still uh, people just learn the basic things of them and uh, never use the advanced stuff. There's a lot of things to learn in the in the preprocessors, and uh, they bring a lot of value to the project uh, to the project. So I think that's really valuable for somebody to learn as well. Yes, exactly. And the front end uh, developer is really good career for your future high demand uh, job. Yes, very. Yeah, very. I mean, I don't know about you, but me personally, was once I started working and once I got the first project. I was actually never worried to get the project or the job. I mean, they were not clearly like the best job in the world. And at the beginning, I was not choosing. I was just, hey, get, you know, please give me whatever is there, whatever available project is there, even though it's mm -hmm. it suck, the, 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 the salary is not good. I mean, the rate of, of the project, but whatever. I mean, it gives you an experience. And as long as you're doing what you love, it's good, right? So for me, the front end is high in demand. You're doing what you love. And it, there's always something to learn new. And you're working with exciting people. Like you're working with the whole team, basically. You're working with designers, with the backend developers, with project managers, with QA testers. Even in my company, we are having interviews with the users. So a lot of things, uh, it's really exciting. For, for me, it's uh, maybe one of the best positions. Yeah. Exactly. So maybe what do you think in the, maybe in the next year, for the front end trends. Yeah. So you never know actually with front end. But the thing is that uh, what we see that the Angular is, is actually dropping on the rankings, let's yeah. say it like that. Yeah. And uh, what I see that really popular right now is Svelte. So actually, I, I just run through the documentation. I didn't have a chance yet to try it out and to build a project with it. That's on my pipeline to build a project and to share with people how I, you know, how I like it and is it something that it's worth. But it, it gains so much attention and popularity that I think that it might be a good, a good technology to learn in the next year. Vue is also really high uh, in, the, in like popularity. I mean, yes. still the React is the most popular, but you never know. Yes. It may, exactly. I mean, nothing lasts forever. So. Let's see who is the next big thing. <laughs> what is the next big thing, right? Yes. I don't know. Do you have any, uh, you know, uh, yeah, aspirations or what do you think is going to be the next big thing in the world yeah, of front end? I, I strongly agree with you. I mean, like few three is really good right now and even React more good. Like React have uh, released their web components, I, I guess. Is that right? Yes, correct. Yeah really fast and it's really good totally it's always exciting so yeah that's one of the good things and people usually mock javascript and the number of frameworks that it's releasing <laughs> in libraries but yeah. yeah i mean the thing is that you shouldn't be learning all of them you just find, you need to find what works for you and your team what suits the best you don't have to learn and I mean, most developers don't know that many frameworks or libraries most of them know a couple of them and that's it the key is just learn it, <laughs> just learn it first, just stay first. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And the thing is that the majority of them are very similar. I mean, the things under the hood and how it's built, it's different, but the syntax in most of them is similar and the patterns are similar once you learn the first one. Even, even Angular and React are similar, even though they are totally different, uh, how, they, how they work and with the DOMs, virtual DOMs, I mean, React, but the thing is that the it's similar with the component. It's component-based frameworks. They are splitting the applications. And once you learn how to pass the properties, it's actually similar to all of this. It's similar for Vue. It's similar for yeah for, for all of them. You can find that point which connects them, even though the people say they are totally opposite. And I don't think so. Yeah, exactly. So maybe like people in the first uh, first place to learn about front end, and then. They really want to get hired. Maybe do you have like any tips or 
technique, like the interviews about front end? Yeah, actually, I do speak a lot on my on my LinkedIn channel about getting hired or how to prepare yourself for for a front end interview. The basic thing which most of the companies do actually ask the biggest one, and actually a lot of remote platforms, and I'm a member of ten if not more uh, remote platforms like TopTal. Uh, the thing is that you need to learn the data structures and algorithms with JavaScript. And some, uh, like I said, majority of companies do actually ask these questions and these type of problems. Apart from that, some of them are don't ask these kind of questions. They just want to see how do you code and what is your experience. So I think that you need to know both in order to prepare yourself to get a job and to be uh, to be uh, very in a very good position in the market. And actually, it depends what are your aspirations. Maybe somebody doesn't want to be a part of the big company, so he can build his portfolio. And especially if you work as a remote developer, I can tell that from my own experience. The building online presence is probably the number one thing that you need to, to do. Uh, you may ask why. The thing is that everyone has CV, and there's millions and millions of CVs out there. Some are better, some are worse. But the thing is, which uh, differentiate developers, and especially in remote world, is what do you do online? And what is your online presence? What do you do? Do you help others on Stack Overflow? Do you answer the questions? Do you help your projects and the libraries on the GitHub? Do you create tutorials and help others with the skills that you have on YouTube? Do you share tips and code snippets on LinkedIn? What do you do apart from you know your work? And how do you help others? Is your online presence? And if you work on that, you will separate yourself. But I mean, that's for somebody who wants to be ambitious. If you yeah. just want to get a job and you know get the paycheck, then you don't have to do all of this. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, but it's really good tips. I mean, like developers these days, I mean, really like lazy to to build like even just for blog, but it's actually good yeah. for for their for their investment, I guess, for, yes. for the future. Totally. I mean, previously people just went to like LinkedIn and when, when they are hiring, they check your LinkedIn profile and see it as a CV to see your work history. But for that, you, you have your CV and people can see that. People want to see what do you do in your free time apart from your daily job? And do you really are passionate about? Because most of the good jobs, actually, a lot of people do... Uh, apply for these positions and they need to separate the good ones out of the bad ones and even if you don't have the experience sometimes they look for the passion if you're intelligent smart enough and you have the passion they will hire you and there, if there is somebody who is more qualified but he doesn't share the passion towards that product or that company they're not going to hire him you know that's the thing yes exactly so you have to prepare your strong fundamental and then prefer your portfolio and then like get socialized with other developers or share something that can be useful for other people or other developers yes. out there. Yes. Just share what you think it's valuable, what you find valuable and also to identify yourself with the thing, with the company and just don't apply to every single company out there. Find what you think it's it's what really is interesting for you and what is passionate in that company and about that product. And once you do that, you will you can show that to people. And I know that because I'm also in a recruiting process of my company and I can see that in people. You can just see when somebody is just applying and he doesn't even know the basic things about the company. And so nobody's going to hire you when they see that you're not interested. <laughs> you need to see yeah. that somebody really wants to work there. And even though maybe he's not the, the best develop out there and i think you know there's plenty more uh, i mean a lot more smarter people than i am from my own uh, school from my own city and town but they 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 haven't done nearly what i have done just because of that passion you know because they don't enjoy it as much as i do i think yes exactly uh maybe do you have like dreams or uh, another achievement that you haven't achieved this year what exactly yeah, well, to be honest, my biggest dream when I was younger was to work for one of these companies, like I mentioned before. But 
right now I'm a little bit, let's say, older and I have some different things. For yeah. now, I just wanted, yeah, I just wanted to to start, uh, the, like initial idea wasn't to build my online presence. The initial idea was to stay up to date and what it, what is changing in the industry. But it, that led to some other things and I got some huge and good feedback from people on LinkedIn, especially because YouTube is not that uh, impactful yet. So I got, I liked the idea. I liked the feedback. And also I wasn't learning only from the content. I'm not presenting myself as a, as a mentor or master or the most on the, oh, the smartest uh, developer in the world. No, this yeah. is two way communication and I'm learning yes. from the people so yeah. many times. I learn so much from the comments of the people when I post something. So I like the interaction and it opens up a lot of doors out there for me. I started getting invites like this one, for example. I started getting invites for podcasts where I can talk to people, meet new people yeah. like like yourself, great developers. Uh, I got it, I was started getting invites for webinars, for events, to write a book, and which I which I think it's really great opportunity for yourself to share your, share your thoughts and uh, to a lot of people to actually understand what you're saying and to just to share your view on the things. It's not. I'm not saying anything new that hasn't been done and said yet. So just your view on it. And also the things like also to create uh, tutorials and just to to get a lot of different offers like to to join a startup, to, to co-found a startup, all these things. And I'm even not looking for all of these things. So just being there, just sharing with people, being honest, uh, give me, uh, gave me uh, all these chances and opportunities. And I'm just, maybe I'm going to, you know, take advantage of it i don't know i'm just cruising this year and just i'm just gonna see where it you know where it takes me who knows yeah so, not sure about you what are you what are your do you have any dreams for this year like you said <laughs> maybe my my dream is maybe like i want to leverage my podcast of course yeah i mean i'm not really like focused with my podcast because i have uh, like busy busy time at my work so you know this podcast is really not uh, maintainable like i don't know like but the listener they're still out there uh waiting for the another episode like that that's that's great yeah that's a great sign yeah. yes i really agree what you talk i mean like you mentioned uh, earlier that in the end, you need to make an impact for people. Maybe can change their life. Yes. yes. No, I was getting some of the messages from people on LinkedIn and on YouTube as well, who to who told me actually you inspired me to start learning <laughs> Angular. So okay. to receive some you know messages like that, and actually I posted a story a couple of days ago from from the messages I received from people, and when you get things like that, because. I'm always critical about myself and I think that tutorials can be way better. The videos I'm creating, the code snippets, everything could be much more professional and it's a learning curve. You need to learn all of these things. So it's a learning for myself to how to share my thoughts, ideas better to people and how to look more professional. But when you see, even at this earlier stage, when you see the people to get back to you and say, hey, you got me inspired. I like how to you compare the things with real life in, in technology and it got me hooked up uh then you really know that you make the change and just one person makes the change you know yes exactly time flies maybe this is the last question do you have any advice or any message for other developers out there yeah i mean it's a general message to people so i just a lot of people do actually ask me how to become a developer around me how to become a developer because they hear all these things about that you get a lot of money and you're just working for i don't know especially for remote developers a couple hours a day and that's it but my my advice is you should look what you enjoy and what you enjoy doing and especially if you're looking to learn a technology don't just learn like react because it's most popular find what is the the thing that you enjoy doing and then you were going to be successful. If you're just going for the money, I mean, that's a valid reason I, I may say for someone, but you're not going to be the best. And you're not going to, to be the best version of yourself if you're not, not working with something that you're truly passionate about. 
and just find what is that for yourself. And trust me, you're going to be successful. Time needs to pass in order to go from a beginner to master, but you're, in, you're going to enjoy the process. And I'm far from somebody who can call himself, himself a master, and I'm still at that journey. The thing is, I'm not looking forward to get to the end of it because I join, I enjoy the process of it. And I, I do that every single day. And every single day, I learn something new. And every single project which comes to me brings something new. So go do what you like and uh, you will see the fruits of your work. That's, that's my advice for people. That's really great. I mean, so inspiring. Yeah. Uh, once again, thank you for inviting me. It was, yes, it was pleasure it's my to, pleasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my pleasure. Thank you for your time, Slobodan. Thank you for your time as well. And uh, have a great day and to have a successful podcast this year and to succeed. I mean, yeah. Yes, you too. Have a nice day and bye-bye. So that's it for today. Thanks for listening. See you in the next episode. I'm Rohan. Have a good day. Hope you're doing well. Stay healthy and so. Bye-bye. Peace. <laughs>